In this episode of the FXDM Educational Series, we're going to be taking a look at the Average Directional Movement Index, otherwise known as the ADX, which was created by Wells Wilder. Now, it consists of basically three lines, which you can see here drawn on my chart. The first one is the ADX itself, and then there are two others, which we call directional indicators. There's a positive version, which I've drawn as green, and a negative version, which I've drawn as red. Now, what the lines are basically telling us is that they're evaluating the strength of the trend. That's what the ADX line, which is the black one here, it's telling us the strength of the trend independent of which direction the trend is actually going. And then the directional indicators tell us which direction the trend is in fact heading. Now, the ADX line itself is going to move above or below a couple of lines that I've drawn here. Now, I've just drawn a couple of horizontal lines here, one at 25 and one at 20. Now, what we assume is that any time the, direct, the ADX line is above 25, we're in a strong trend. If it's below 20, then we're in no trend environment. So we want to look for buying or shorting opportunities that are in favor of the trend when the ADX line is above 25. We want to put a strong trend in our favor. But it is important to remember that the ADX line itself is trend direction independent. It can be above 25 if it's a bearish trend. It can be above 25 if it's a bullish trend. It doesn't matter at all. The directional indicators are the portion of the indicator that we're going to be using to identify which direction the trend is actually going. Now, the idea is to look for long opportunities when the ADX line is above 25 or certainly above 20, and the directional indicator, the green one, the positive one, crosses above the directional indicator negative, the red one. So, for example, such an event happened right there, which we'll say correlates with this bar right here. Now, the reason why I'm drawing a little line here is that investors would be looking for a buying signal like this, and then they would set their stop loss at what we call the extreme point. So the extreme point rule is to set your stop loss, at least initially, at the low price of that bar that, that occurred with the buying signal. Now, initially, Wells Wilder suggested that a trader would at least consider an exit when the directional indicator lines crossed against their trade. So for example, we would look at this situation right here when the directional indicator positive crossed below the directional indicator negative as a potential time when the long position should be closed. Let's say that that was occurring somewhere in this region right there. Now, a selling signal is actually very similar. So once again, remember, we're looking for a time when the ADX line, the black line, is still above 25, so indicating that we're in a strong trend. So I have such a scenario right here on the left-hand side of my chart. So it's indicating a strong trend. And what we're looking for is just the opposite of what we discussed here, which is a period when the red or negative directional indicator crosses above the green or positive directional indicator triggering that position. Now again, this, the extreme point rule would apply. Let's say, for example, that that scenario played out on this bar right here, where an investor would potentially consider, certainly, placing a stop loss at the high of that bar that coincided with the trigger there for a short position. Now, obviously, an investor is going to want to trail those stops, and in fact, the parabolic SAR, or stop and reverse indicator, also developed by Wells Wilder, is oftentimes used in combination with the ADX indicator because it does such a good job of helping to identify where that trailing stop should be placed. But initially, we set it at those extreme points. Let's look at a couple of examples of a buying and a selling signal using the ADX indicator. Now, before we take a look at these examples, let's cover how to add the 25 and 20 lines so you can tell when the ADX is in trending or non-trending area. Right-click on the indicator, select Properties of the Average Directional Movement Index, and then under the Levels tab, add the level for 20 and 25 that you can see here. Once that's done, click OK, and it will be applied to your chart. As you can see in this bearish example, the ADX is indicating that there is a trend, and we get a sell signal when the directional indicator negative went above the directional indicator positive. Now remember the extreme point rule, where initially an investor would consider placing a stop loss at the high price of the day that that trigger actually occurred. In this bullish example, we have the ADX also indicating a trend. It's not in the non-trending area. 
and we have the directional indicator positive crossing above the directional indicator negative. Now here again, we want to apply the extreme point rule where a stop loss would be placed at the low point of the day that we saw that trigger or the buying signal actually occur. And again, using a trailing stop is a very effective way to make sure that you're protecting your profits. The ADX line can be a little bit disorienting to investors who haven't used it before because it doesn't indicate trend direction, but rather trend strength. That's why we use the directional indicators to identify buying and selling signals, as well as potential signals where we want, might want to exit a trade.